Okay, so now I have my hood and my hood lining ready to put together. So in this case, I want to put the two wrong sides together, like so. And I'm going to just leave the raw edge of the lining. Um, because I have this beautiful finish on the front of the hood, I want to keep that. And as you know, knit fabrics do not unravel at all. So I'm not really worried about the knit fabric um, becoming a problem and unraveling. So I'm going to just line it up with the edge of the embroidery and then I'm going to stitch right along this edge here where the sequins begin and the embroidery starts uh, on this fabric. The only issue I'm going to have is right where these embroidered edges meet and I'm going to fold those neatly and then put that seam of the lining right on top of the seam for the hoodie, uh, for the sequin part of the hood. I'm going to pin it in place. I'm just taking that seam allowance and folding it kind of at an angle back and down so that I can enclose it inside this knit fabric lining. Now I'm ready to stitch, but I have to stitch it from the right side of the sequins so that they don't get stuck down inside my sewing machine. And I'm using the same zigzag stitch that I've been used for everything else. And now I have a nice looking finish on the inside of the hood. Now it's a time to uh, baste the bottom two layers together and then we can attach it to the top. Because this fabric stretches so much, I'm going to put a bunch of pins in here again uh, from the right side. And I'm lining up my seam area. So I'm going to have to trim a little bit of this off. We're ready to stitch. I'm only using a quarter of an inch seam allowance for this just to put the two pieces together, kind of base them together. Jessica from Chambray Blue Sewing. Today we're going to work with sequins and we're making a sequin hoodie. Um, this fabric came from uh, a wholesaler and I'm interested in trying it out, see how it's going to work for this project. So it's kind of uh, a new thing. I have sewn with sequins before, but I've never tried this particular type 
it's very lightweight and it has a mesh um, kind of background. It's quite stretchy and thin uh, and I think it'll work great for this project. So I cut out my pattern pieces from the sequins and I used uh, just a regular pair of sewing shears. I know some people recommend keeping one set of shears just for sewing sequins because they can really dull your blades. I used a pair that I've had for a while and I plan on sharpening them um, because sequins do dull the blades quite quickly. You can decide which way you'd want to do it, but you might consider um, keeping a separate pair just for sequins. So I'm lining my sweatshirt with this lightweight blue jersey. It's a cotton jersey and it's very thin as you can see. I think it'll really work well with this lightweight sequin fabric. Um, so that's going to show you how to do that. So I'm starting with the pocket. This is a kangaroo uh, pocket that'll go on the front of my hoodie. And I'm going to put my um, jersey fabric on top. And I'm going to sew it with the sequin side down into the sewing machine. Uh, I just think it's going to work a little better that way, but we'll see how it goes. I'm using a jersey needle that's a size 12. So a little bit heavier needle um, than some other projects that you might have using jersey. And I'm going to use just a regular zigzag stitch for this. It's a very narrow zigzag, so I'm going to change my settings to be 1.5 for the width of the stitch and then a 4.0 for the length of the stitch and um, sew it that way. So here we go. This sequins are very stretchy, so it might be interesting to see how much this stretches as I work with it. But, uh, so I'm going to sew it all the way around. Do the next edge. I'm going to leave um, the curved opening open for turning the pocket to the right side. bottom as well. can add this to the neckline of the hoodie. Okay, our sleeve is now in the shirt. So we can now pin together the underarm seam. 
We're getting really close to being done with this thing. I'm going to pin together the underarm and I'm going to start sewing from the cuff all the way to the underarm area. We're going to match that seam and then down the side seam. I'm going to put a pin at the underarm. And start at the sleeve cuff and then all the way down to the hem. I'm stopping to sew a vent at the bottom of the shirt. I am stopped about six inches from the bottom and what's going to happen here is we're just going to uh, use a piece of bias to, to finish the front and the back will just turn, uh, the back hem will just turn under a couple times and stitch that seam allowance width um, so about a quarter of an inch total but I'm turning it over an eighth and then one more time folding it over two times to make the quarter inch and I'm just going to top stitch it here Want to keep it nice and narrow, no more than a quarter inch wide for this. All right, and then on the front, I'm going to use a piece of bias uh, to finish that, and I'll show you how to do that later. So for now, we'll, we'll go back and sew the other side seam, starting at the sleeve, start at the cuff of the sleeve, and sew all the way to the underarm. underarm you want to make sure your seam allowances are facing down toward the hem of the garment. It seems a little thick there but it'll work to sew across them all. 
shouldn't cause you any issues. So again, we're going to sew this vent in, and it's about five, six inches. So I'm going to turn the seam allowance back an eighth or a quarter of an inch, and then turn it again a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to stitch that in place. stitch up to where the side seam is. You can back tack it.
trim your thread. So that's the finished part of the vent in the back. And then I'll show you how we're going to finish the front with a piece of bias tape. Okay, so now my sleeves are set into the top. We can turn it right side out. have so far. You can see we have the pocket stitched in place. We have the sleeves set in. We'll give those a little bit of pressing and then we'll attach the hood is next. So here I'm at the ironing board. I press the sleeves. I'm using um, a press lock cloth and I'm going over the sleeve. Both seams are kind of lined up on the garment so it's easy to press at the same time. And add a little bit of steam. Also do the neckline. So it's pressed flat into shape. Notice how I'm not pushing the iron back and forth. It's an up and down motion. You don't want to stretch it anymore. And then we'll do the other side of the armhole. There we go. And also the side seam since we haven't pressed that yet. down with a little steam. Go make sure your iron has lots of water for the steam. And we'll do this other side. One more side. Here's my press cloth. Press that. Okay, it's 
looking pretty good. Next step will be the hood at the neck. Okay, to sew the hood, I've cut uh, my hood pieces out of the sequin fabric. And this fabric ha came with an embroidered edge on it, which I didn't really want anywhere on the, sw the hoodie. Uh, but I decided to leave the edging on the hood part of it. So I'm going to work with it that way. I've matched the patterns and now I'm going to stitch the hood pieces together. I'm going to start by stitching um, the two sequin pieces together first and then I'll line it with the jersey fabric. So that's the hood seam and the the jersey pieces I actually serge together um, but you can sew those with the same zigzag stitch I'm going to sew it again just to make sure that it's not going to come apart So now I'm going to put the hood together with the lining and I should first give the hood some pressing and I think I might even have to um, put some notches in here. We'll see if it's once I press it if it looks good otherwise I might have to um, do something with that curve so it turns a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to trim some threads here. And then I'm going to give this pressing with the press cloth and some steam. All the way down the back. Out, and then we can turn it right side out and press it a little more. Of 
interesting. And then finally the top area. So that's looking good. So now we can add the lining to the hood. That so you don't have a needle break. So as I get closer to the front of the garment, I'm going to um, pivot and stitch the front so that you can see the stitching here. leave the needle down in the fabric. I'm going to take just two stitches. Oop. Okay, so I'm ready to stitch the other half of the neckline in the ditch between the hood and the body of the garment. I started at the center back and I stitched to the front on one side and rather than stitch all the way across the front, I decided uh, I'm going to make a change there and understitch this part of it instead and we'll get to that in a minute but for right now um, we're going to stitch from the center back seam of the hood to the other side of the front folding the bias tape down inside the garment to hold it in place okay so that's what it looks like. It's really almost invisible. It's just at the back of the hood. The hood into the seam of the hood. And that's just to keep the two pieces from pulling apart. I'm going to put it right in the seam line there. It's really small, it's not noticeable, and it'll keep that hood sitting nicely. We can cut our threads and give it a good pressing and we are ready to go. That is the entire top. You can finish the other seams inside if you want to with a knit. They will not unravel, so I'm not going to finish my seams, uh, but you could if you wanted to. Thanks for watching.